Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Ow. Welcome back to another episode. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode. It's your boy, John. I'm still in Minnesota. And today we got, you know, we got a little bit of time left in the day to do a little bit of fishing. And I'm thinking, dude, I have not harvested in a while. So that being said, today is gonna be a catch clean cook. We're gonna try to catch some pan fish, either crappie, bluegill. I'm not really 100% sure. But before we get today's video started, today's video is sponsored by Carl's Bait and Tackle. For those of you that don't know what Carl's Bait and Tackle is, it's basically a mall for fishermen on the internet. Any fishing need that you guys have, Carl's Bait and Tackle will have it. That's where I get all of my stuff. That's where Sam, Flair, Bonzetti, that's where we get all of our fishing stuff. So go click the link down below and you can save up to 20% off. But my stomach is getting kind of hungry and I want to start catching some bluegills and crappies and whatever else is in here. So with that being said, almost slipped and dived there. Let's go catch some fish. Oh goodness folks. I'm not even set up camera wise yet and I already got fish on the screen. So I'm gonna try to catch one for you guys on this point of view. I want to catch at least a few bluegill and a few crappie just to see if we can taste the difference. And I already got hella fish on the screen. About to get murked, I think. Yep. There we go. What is this going to be? Kind of feels like a crappie. Nope, bluegill. Oh my God. I'm sorry. That just looked giant. It is a giant. Oh God, we can't, we can't eat these guys. You, you don't want to eat these. Now, when you are fishing and you catch something that's like a big trophy size for that species, you want to let them go. Like this guy right here, that's a good looking bluegill, but we're going to let him go because this thing's probably about nine, almost 10 inches, like just a freaking behemoth. So you want to let the big fish go so that, you know, other anglers can enjoy catching them. And, you know, we need these guys to spawn out in the spring so that they get their good genetics into the system. But just a nice little beauty right here. First fish of the day, biggin. Alrighty, time to catch some eaters. None of that giant trophy fish anymore. Okay, well, I do want to catch a giant trophy fish, but I want to catch some eaters, man. I'm hungry. Oh, shoot. We got fish coming in. We got fish coming in. Oh, wow. What is this? I don't even need a jig it that much. Oh, we got two. Good competition. I'm going to get murked by the right one, it looks like. Yep, there we go. Is this going to be a harvester? Is this going to be a har- Oh my god, this is definitely not. All right, we got a pike or we got a bass, boys. We got a pike or we got a bass. One of the two. This is 100% not a panfish. No, a little largey. The largey. What's up, guy? Well, too bad this is not a largemouth catch clean cook because we'd have our video done by now. It's your lucky day, pal. All right, we need ourselves some panfish to eat, though. I'm, I'm getting hungry. Oh God, I just caught that largey. We got a bunch of fish coming in on the old Garmin. As you guys can see, I'm gonna drop down and smack one right here. All right, let's see what daddy can do. You can see me going down like a missile. Going down, going down right there. Yep. Oh, we got some suspended ones, boys. Look at this one right here. Look at that, that guy is suspended as all get out. Oh, now they're all just appearing out of nowhere. Who's gonna get me? Who's gonna get me? This, oh my God, I'm gonna get murked. Yep. That was a slow reaction hook set, that was my bad. Ooh! Let's see here, is this an eater? Eh, you're a little small. I'll probably put you back, you got lucky. This is not that bad of a fish though. Oh wow, there's a big mark down there. I gotta get back down there. All right, just a little too small. All right, so we haven't caught any eaters yet. We've caught some bass and like a small crappie and a too big of a bluegill. Just wanna give you guys a quick little tip when you're fishing. As you guys can see, when I see fish on the radar, you can't really see them right now. Um, I like to work each fish differently. So I like to see how aggressive they are. Sometimes they like it when you, when you raise them up a little bit and then dead stick it, then they'll eat it. Other times they like it when you just dead stick it and not move it at all. And sometimes I like it when you just give a little like flicky, 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 and then they just like to eat it like that. So you just, what I'm trying to say is you got to treat each fish differently. They're all gonna, they're all gonna be different. Like not each fish is going to be exactly the same. So when you're fishing guys, if something's not working, try something different. Like if you've just been dead sticking the whole time, oh my God, hold on. Where, 
Where did this fish come from? Oh, there we go. I barely got him hooked. I barely got him hooked. Ooh, little crappy. I'm trying to give the boys some tips here. But as I was saying, guys, if you've been dead sticking the whole day and you haven't caught any fish, start jigging a little bit more, you know, or start pounding the bottom a little bit more, you know. If you're going to do something and it's not working, like, just, just switch it up. But we got fish on the screen now, so I'm going to see if I can catch some eaters here. Drop back down. You can see old Daddy John going down, going down. We got, it looks like, I don't know, a bunch of fish down there. I'm going to get whacked here. Please be an eater. So when fish come up to me, I like to watch my rod tip because sometimes they'll just do a super light hit. So you really need to pay attention to your rod tip. Oh, oh, this guy, come on, come on. Do something about it, do something about it, you're right on me. Dead sticking, there he is. I was watching my rod tip and there we go. Oh, wow, wow, you are frisky. There we go, that's an eater right there, boys. We got our first eater of the day, just a nice little bluegill. Boom, taking you home for table fare. Oh my God, there's a bunch of fish on the screen. Oh, we're gonna get murked. Oh, he hit that hard. He hit that super hard. What we got here? Oh, crappie, there we go. That's a good eater. I'm eating that one. Yes, sir. I got a crappie and a bluegill now. All right, so I probably don't need to eat that much more. I mean... I'm just one guy. I might just make a sandwich or something. I'm not really sure how I'm going to make them yet. I'm just going to kind of fish here for fun for a little bit just because look at all these fish. I mean, how can you not want to do that? Oh, right out of their mouth. Oh, this guy wants some. This guy wants some. Little crappe. They were getting a little finicky, but this guy, he wanted it. See you later, guy. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, about like an hour later, I made it back to my girlfriend's house where I'm staying. But now it's time to clean the fish that we caught today. Again, I kept one crappie and I kept one bluegill. YouTube has been acting like really, really, really sketchy lately. Oh, there goes my knife. I would love to show you how to fillet these guys right here, but YouTube has been acting so bad lately. Like everybody's getting age restricted and like suppressing channels. And actually, I, I think I said this in the last previous video or, or a video before this, our channel right now is not monetized because YouTube accidentally detected our channel for something that we didn't do. And now there's nothing left to do uh, but wait until our suspension's over. So if you guys didn't know, we're not monetized right now and it really sucks. I don't want to make YouTube any more mad at us than they already are because clearly they're something, they have something against us. So I'm going to clean these guys off camera and then I'll bring them inside and I'll show you guys what they look like after I'm done slicing and dicing. So these are what the meats turn out to be. Like I said, YouTube's dumb, so I couldn't show it, but these are the bluegill and these are the crappie. Now there's a lot of different ways to cook this. And you know, I'm at my girlfriend's like apartment right now. So there's not that many like cooking ingredients for fish. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna test the bluegill versus the crappie and see which one I think is better. Who is the king of the pan fish? We're gonna keep it super simple. I wanna be able to taste all of the meat. I feel like if you fry it or like, you know, throw in something else, like it kind of masks like the taste and you don't get the full fish effect. I want the full fish effect. So what I'm gonna do basically is just put it on like a stove with like, um, just like a cast iron and like put a little bit of seasoned salt, maybe some pepper, nothing too crazy, nothing too crazy. I wanna be able to taste the fish and see which is better, the bluegill or the crappie. Okay, so we're just gonna be cooking it in Pam, nothing too crazy. And then let's see, what do we got for seasonings? Ooh, okay, we're going Old Bay. We'll do a little bit of onion powder. Ooh, cinnamon sugar. We'll try a little bit of that. So that's all we're gonna season them with, nothing too crazy. Basically, seasoned salt, Old Bay seasoning onion powder, and then just a hint of cinnamon sugar. I'm, I'm curious, I feel like this could be a game changer. All right, so we're gonna take our bluegill fillets. We're gonna put them on the left side right here, just like that. And then we take our crop pies, throw them in on the right side, just like that. All right, first up, Old Bay. Get a little bit of sprinkling on here. 
Next up, onion powder. Don't want to go too heavy with this. I would suggest just like a little bit of that. If you're going to go heavy on anything, I'd probably go heavier on the Old Bay. Light on this and light on the cinnamon sugar. Last but not least, a little bit of cinnamon sugar. I've never done this before. I just have a feeling this is going to be good because I've had salmon with like some cinnamon sugar on it and it was fire. So I'm kind of curious to see if like panfish would taste good with it. Just go a little bit right there. Boom. There we go. I'm going to let this cook for about a minute and a half or two, and then I'm going to flip it, repeat on the other side, maybe do a little bit more seasoning, and then I will take it off, and then I will show you guys the finished project. Oh, goodness gracious. Honestly, I think it looks pretty fire. So right here, we got the bluegill. And then right here is the crappie. And like I was saying, there's a lot of different ways to make it. And honestly, my favorite way is definitely fish tacos. Um, you can never go wrong with that. It's super good, super, super good. Or just frying them in general. It's like always a safe go-to. But like I said, I want to settle the debate. What's better, bluegill or crappie? So that's why I decided to just kind of, you know, cook it naked, so to speak. And uh, we're going to crown the winner today. But first, we got to take a bite of this meat. Um, we're going crappie first. Look at this big beefy crappie right here. She's hot. You can smell the cinnamon too. I might have gone a little bit heavy, but we'll see. That is so good. It takes like three seconds and then the spices and then like the cinnamon all mixed together after three seconds. And then it just like combines to like a really good taste. And you're just like, it just hits you at once. You're just like, whoa, hello. That was good. That was really good, I'm not lying. I'm still eating it. I'm disappointed though, because it would be so good to put this in a nice little tortilla, put some tartar sauce, a little bit of lettuce, a little bit of cheese, a little bit of pico, a little bit of tomatoes. Oh my goodness. I, I wish I was doing that right now. We're even making like a sandwich out of this. This is like perfect. Okay, crappie was pretty good, but this bluegill looks pretty fire. I think this is gonna put up a pretty good fight, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go in right now. I can definitely taste the difference in the meats. So the crappie was more like, more, more like, not as firm. The bluegill was more firm, the crappie was less firm, and the crappie, yeah, it's more flaky. Okay, yeah, crappie's more flaky, not as tough, and bluegill's a little tougher, but I think the bluegill's taste was really fire. That last bite I just took kind of just sealed the deal for me. I think crappie is the better tasting fish. Yep. It tastes more, uh, like, I don't know, I just like it a little bit more flaky and a little bit more fluffy. The bluegill was just a little bit more tough, and that could be because the pan wasn't heated properly, or it was, like, not evenly heated, you know what I'm saying? So I could be blaming myself there, but I, I feel like, just based off what I just had, I would say crappie. I thought that was pretty fire. And I kept like about the perfect size crappie. That crappie was probably about 10, 11 inches. That's like perfect eater, perfect, perfect eater. As I was saying earlier in this video, guys, if you guys catch like any fish that's a trophy for its species, so like say a crappie, you know, um, anything above like 12 and a half or 13, probably would throw that back. Bluegill, anything above like nine and a half, nine, that's those, you need to put those back. Walleye, you know, obviously you're not keeping anything over like you know, 23. What I'm saying is I like, personally, this is just how I see it. I like putting those trophy fish back into the system for a couple different reasons. One, so that those fish can go in the spring and spawn and like they can disperse all their really good genetics and hopefully create a ecosystem that's full of a lot of trophy fish. And also I, I like putting them back just because I feel like it's kind of cool if someone else gets the opportunity to catch that fish that you caught. I mean, obviously when you reel it in, you're like super happy and stuff, but when someone else gets to reel it in, it's it's pretty rewarding too. So that's kind of how I see it. I know there's a lot of guys that go out there and just like harvest, 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 you know, and I'm not bashing that. I'm just saying how I do it and just kind of telling you guys that's what I do. But I'm not saying I don't like harvesting. I do like harvesting every once in a while, but I'm never taking more than I need. Oh, Clamisha, Clamisha. Clamisha's in my girlfriend's garage right now. And then I got 
the K drill, the bibs, and the heater, and all the good. The Garmin, the Garmin's over there too. Got all that stuff over there. I have one more day left here, and then I'm going back down to Omaha. So tomorrow I gotta make a count. I'm gonna go out and try to film some bangers for you guys. It is still early ice, guys, so if you are going ice fishing, make sure to be super, super careful. I wouldn't wanna see anything bad happen to you guys. Just because I'm out there doesn't mean that you guys need to go out there. Go out there when you're comfortable and when there's safe ice. Also remember to check out Carl's Bait and Tackle. I'll leave it linked down below. Remember, it's a place to get all fishing goods. You can save up to 20% and it has all the juice. Thank you so much for watching today's video. We'll see you guys next time.